also with you. There, he says, take my mic. I don't know what happened to that one. Okay, welcome. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're watching us on your uh, Facebook. And uh, we expect to have a great day. Today we celebrate women in ministry. And you'll find out more about that as we go. There will be a time for fellowship after worship. Out there with some cookies and juice and time to congratulate the women. Next week, there'll be a luncheon to celebrate the long ministry of Kathy Murdoch among us. And if you haven't signed up for that, this is your chance. It's in the bulletin. Make sure you turn in a sign up. And we have two announcements, one from Bonnie Pritchard. There she comes. There's no hurry. I'm Bonnie Pritchard and I am your liaison for the corner table. You may not have known that. Uh, however, uh, that's what I'm here for, and the corner table has been serving the needs of the folks in Catawba County for 21 years, a long time, but they've also served almost one million meals. As you can imagine, that takes money to do so. And I don't know for how long, but I'll find out. They have been having a feed the flock gala. And some of you have received invitations, I'm sure, to this gala. And they use this as a fundraiser for the corner table and feeding the folks. So uh, I would like to ask, they're going to have a new feature this year, I think, uh, a roulette wheel where you pay $20 to spin the roulette wheel, and you get no less than a $20 gift card for doing so. Uh, they would like to ask folks from around the county to donate $20 gift cards to this function so that anybody can donate to the corner table Feed the Flock Gala. So I'm going to have a basket labeled Feed the Flock, and you'll know what that's for. And if you go to the grocery store in the next couple of weeks, please also buy a gift card for $20 that can be used on the roulette wheel and donate that in, and just put the gift card in the basket and I will gather them on Easter uh, and give them to the folks that 
the powers that be at the corner table. Uh, the Feed the Flock Gala this year is going to be on May the 3rd, which is a Friday night, if I'm not mistaken, at 6 o'clock at Moret's Mill. Uh, if you will, please help with this uh, donation to the corner table. And uh, like I said, I'll have a gift card, a uh, gift basket in the office area that is labeled Feed the Flock Gala for the corner table. If you do so, I, it would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Amy Lawyer comes with a what we used to call dog and pony shows in the uh, <laughs> Presbytery of Baltimore. Okay. I don't know if you can see that or not. I tried to get a color that would be visible, right? Here's the dog and pony show. Okay, so I'm with um, Council on Caring, which used to be Congregational Ministries, and we are trying to bring back um, time for fellowship. So like when I walked in this morning and I saw the punch bowl, I really got excited because I do love a good punch. You know, how many of you like maybe punch and cookies or something? We all do. We all do. So we are trying to bring that back, and we need your help. So the Council on Caring, our committee, is going to provide the napkins and the cups and the lemonade. Dan, hold it up. Dan, do your part. Lemonade, right there. Okay, that's all he had to do. Um, we're going to provide that. And all we need for you to do is to provide, like, some cookies or a donut or whatever, or both, or whatever you love, or brownies, or pizza. Pizza would be great. Or sausage balls. I like those too. Or whatever. Just something that we can share together and have time for fellowship because we've missed that. We really, really have. So there are 31 spots, and I've kind of looked as everybody came in. We have over 31 families here or units, so that should be filled by the time we leave today, hopefully. Y'all, it is the easiest job ever. It really is. The table's out there. You don't need tablecloths. We're not that fancy. The kitchen is right over here to the side. You just make a little bit of lemonade. Make, you don't have to make water. Just get it out of the sink. It's fine. And then put out little stuff for us to talk and gather and have a little treat. So I was thinking this morning that, you know, a lot of upsets have happened for some people. You know, last night was an upset for Carolina fans, I know. Um, and, and listen, I know. So I was thinking, you know, when I made this poster this weekend, I was like, we're never going to get it all signed up for in one Sunday. And I might have to come back and mention this again next Sunday. But then NC State won last night, and I thought, Things can happen, right? Things can happen. And listen, listen, I'm a Carolina fan, but my brother went to NC State, so I've always promised my mother that if NC State ever played Carolina, I would pull for State. So sorry, I did pull for State last night. Um, so I'm thinking if miracles happen like they did and State's going on and they won the ACC championship, then we can get this filled by today, right? By today. We want it filled, okay? That is our goal. Like, I will be so excited. If y'all will just put your name down. It is easy, I promise. I would never ask you to do anything that I wouldn't have already done myself that wouldn't be easy. It's very easy. So I'll be out there um, in the narthex as you leave and as you're eating. I'm going to be carrying around the poster like this. And Dan will have the pen and you just sign up your name. Okay? And we're going to get it all done today. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you.
I was cold to go up here. Is it working now? Since that was not. Hear me? Okay. Join me in the call to worship. Okay. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Purge, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Let us worship God. Join me in the prayer of praise and adoration. O oh God, who fashioned the covenant and sealed it with the promise of life everlasting, we praise you for mercies that are boundless and sure. Your ways are just. Your grace is unending. You have sent us the Christ in whom lies your promise that all things will be made new. We come before your throne of grace with the assurance that you will meet us as we call on your name. Hear us now as we give our oblations and be pleased with our efforts as we respond to Christ's call. Amen.
and let us pray and confess our sins. O oh God of forgiveness, we pray for new life as we confess our old ways. We hear of your promise amid our own self-doubt. Hope is complaining, yet we seek guarantees. Christ calls us to obedience, but we set conditions. When called on to follow, we ask to what end. We applaud commitment, but we treasure our comfort. Forgive our reluctance to walk in human life. And the good news is, and you can believe this, in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Amen. You may be seated. Join me in the prayer of elimination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Our first lesson today is from Peter, chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. You can join me in the, with the Pew Bible, page 233 in the New Testament. For the Lord's sake, accept the authority of every human institution, whether of the emperor, emperor as supreme or of governors as sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing right, you should silence the ignorance of the foolish. As servants of God, live as free people yet do not use your freedom as a pretext for evil. Honor everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, honor the emperor. The word of the Lord.
All right, good morning. Uh, you notice that some people have on green today to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Um, I do not. You can pinch me all you want to. You can pinch me, but you can't pinch Barb. You can't pinch Miss Amy over there. There's a lot of, and we'll take teal and off green too, but happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, if everybody will pull out their bulletin, get my little notes oh my goodness what got in here oh my goodness how did this get in my bag I do not know how that Parker did you put that in my bag what does the wolf do <laughs> all right if everybody will pull up today we're celebrating the gifts of women's Sunday and some of the women around the church have these pens. Now, I'm going to let you hold that. I, let me get my notes out of here. Okay. Um, oh, and I wanted to say we need to keep in prayer. Our, um, Laura is taking some of the youth and adults back to Cedar Creek, where we've been doing a mission trip for 13 years. Uh, they probably arrived right now and surprised Pastor Harold and his wife, Marcy, who are co-pastors of that church, he had a mild stroke a couple of months ago, and they're not going to be able to do the mission program. So they drove all the way to Greenville, Tennessee this morning to surprise them in worship. I hope they got there safely. But if you look on the bulletin, this is the pen we're going to be giving to two women today. And I just think it's just really neat to look at the pen and see if you see any parts. Do you see anything? Madeline, can you see it? Is there anything in the pen, like pictures of things? It kind of looks like a four-leaf clover. It sort of looks like a four-leaf clover for St. Patrick's Day, but that represents the cross. And the cross is in which our sins are forgiven. Does anybody else see a little? Anybody see anything? It looks like a monster truck. Well, I don't see that, Parker. I, I'm not visualizing that. What do you see? It looks like a leaf right here. And the leaf represents personal growth uh, that women uh, respond to through our Bible study as we nurture our faith. Anybody else? Somebody else can yell out. 
hands. The hands are right here. You see the hands? Right there. Do you see the hands? Okay. The hands represent caring and supportive hands that represent women to seek and build an inclusive community of women. And it, there's still more stuff in there. This one is a little hard. The down there, there is a dove. Do you see it? It's down here in the bottom right circle over here. There is a dove, a dove of peace. A dove that indicates our work for peace, not only in our lives, but around the world. Another thing is there. On the opposite side, there is a globe that represents the world and that we will try to have peace throughout the world. And then the whole thing is in the shape of a, it's a butterfly. That's a little hard to see, but it's in the shape of a butterfly, which means new life and the newness of life. So during the reception following church today, we'll see how many ladies you can find with this pen. After we say a prayer, you'll join me downstairs for a blast. If you'll repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for the gifts of women to work for peace. Here in our church, in our community. Amen. Amen. Turning to the gospel, we read from Matthew 22. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. They brought him a denarius. And then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperors. Then he said, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Word of the Lord. So question or paragraph number five of the Barman Declaration says, we confess to the following evangelical truths. Fear God, honor the emperor. Scripture tells us that in the as yet unredeemed world in which the church also exists, the state has by divine appointment the task of providing for justice and peace. It fulfills this task by means of the threat and exercise of force according to the measure of human judgment and human ability. The Church acknowledges the benefit of this divine appointment in gratitude and reverence before him. It calls to mind the kingdom of God, God's commandment in righteousness, and thereby the responsibility of both rulers and of the ruled it trusts and obeys the power of the word by which God upholds all things. We reject the false doctrine as though the state, over and beyond its special commission, 
should and could become the single and totalitarian order of human life, thus fulfilling the Church's vocation as well. And we reject the false doctrine as though the Church, over and above its special commission, should and could appropriate the tasks, the characteristics, and the dignity of the state, thus itself becoming an organ of the state. So here we get into some territory which might be new to some of you, the relationship between the church and the state, or as John Calvin puts it, the doctrine of the civil magistrate. And for Calvin, the main task of government was to secure a space in society for the church to exist. And so the state provides for the church that way. And Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his book called Ethics, says there are four divine mandates that God has provided to order our lives, marriage and family, government, the church, and our daily work. And each of these has a particular function and role in our lives, ordained by God for our benefit. And what Bart writes in this paragraph is that the state should not take over the church's role in life, and the church should not take over the role of the state. They have separate, different functions and should remain separate. So let's take a controversial notion to discuss. Prayer in schools. Some of you remember when the school began, the school day had a moment of prayer in the morning. When I was in high school, it still existed as a moment of silence. And that was a decade after the Supreme Court said it was illegal, which in Pickens meant that they were just about ready to catch up. Well, so what's the issue? I mean, at one time, perhaps this country was more homogenous than it is now, and we're all mostly the same and mostly Protestant. So a Protestant prayer wasn't going to offend anyone except, you know, maybe a couple of Catholics. And most of them were probably at the Catholic school down the street anyway. But what if you lived someplace where there were people from all around the world? My father took my daughter to school one day in West Lafayette, Indiana, and he came back and said, that classroom looked like the United Nations. Everybody was different. Everybody was from a different place. Well, most of them were from around the world. They were children of faculty. And in that school, Protestants were probably a minority. Christians may have been a minority. So if you had a prayer every day, who would pray it? Pastor? A Catholic priest? A Muslim? A rabbi? A Hindu holy man? And if the wrong person prayed the prayer from another faith, would you want your children to be forced to listen to it? So there's the issue. As long as we're mostly the same, there's really not an issue. As soon as there are differences among us, we best not have one person leading the prayer. Now, for a year or so, I was in the Rotary Club of West Lafayette with about 300 other people. And their meetings always started with a prayer. And it was rotated among people on a certain committee. One day it was led by a woman who was a Wiccan. You know, a witch. And that was just too much for me. You see, but you see the issue. So when the state sponsors prayer, in a state-run school that students are required to attend, the state is overreaching. It's becoming the church by taking over the church's role. But it isn't only the state that does this, the church does it too. 
The other day I heard on YouTube someone saying that the founders of our country were all committed Christians. We had to get back to that. Except that the founders of our country were not all committed evangelical Christians. And they did not try to establish a Christian country. And I could go so far as to say the country that many of our countrymen want to take us back to is not even Christian. But I won't say that. One time in West Lafayette, a woman came to see me. She was Canadian. Her husband was Canadian. He'd gotten a job as department head of the Department of Concrete or something. He was an engineer. But she wanted to know what was up with this pledge of allegiance to the flag. Her children had to say it in school. And she told them not to. (laughs) She told me that as a foreigner and as a Christian, it was objectionable for several reasons. And I really couldn't disagree with her. I could see her point. But there are churches that will happily say the Pledge of Allegiance in worship. It's a strange mixture of patriotism and faith. And it takes us dangerously close to idolatry. The church and the state should be separate. I believe that. Otherwise, you get into all kinds of quagmires. But a lot of people in this community may not see it that way. And they want the state to do things to promote and support the Protestant Christian church. We have to live in this community, so we need to be careful. There are other things that won't necessarily involve the state or the church, but they involve our faith. Like leading a prayer before a football game. I've never had to do that. I've never understood why we do it either, but or why do they actually have a prayer at Rotary Club meetings? Now, several times I prayed at the graduations at Purdue, and they have a big book on how not to do it, all the things that you can't say. It goes on for pages. They don't want you to offend people of any other faith. So I got around it by saying, let us pray, and if we did pray, we might pray for things like, and then I listed some of those things. So one time, I was also asked to pray for an invocation at a retirement ceremony that was held in the Pentagon. So I had written out this prayer asking the Prince of Peace to give us peace. And I prayed that in a room full of generals. Most of them nodded. I mean, they all want peace. They work for war, but they, they, they really want peace. Some of them said amen. Most of them seemed to agree with the prayer. But I just thought it was subversive and disruptive to get up in the Pentagon and pray for peace. I just couldn't walk around the halls of power without bearing witness to a higher power. Well, that doesn't mean the state is our enemy. It could be. It could become our enemy. But for now, the state provides justice, and we need that in society. We need someone to order society and regulate our behavior and make decisions. So we need the state to carry out its function in a way that leaves space for us and for all people to exercise whatever faith they want to. (coughs) It would be much easier for us, perhaps, if the state were our enemy, then we'd have someone to hate. But as it is, the state is sometimes aligned with our goals, sometimes not. So we have to think carefully about all these things. And that's the thing we have to remember. <clears throat> We're Americans, yes, 
We're also followers of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. And he has been given all power and authority. He's the one in charge. He's the one who rules over us. And so, ultimately, the church has to follow him in his way. <clears throat> and the state makes claims on our lives. But Jesus' claim is final and supersedes the state's claim. And the church lives with these claims and doesn't try to take the state's role. Now this is really the end of this series. I looked at paragraph number six and it's mostly a summary. The Barman Declaration was specifically aimed at Hitler and his takeover of the German church. But what we see in it for us today is that any attempt to take over the church by anyone should be stopped. And any attempt by the church to overreach its mandate and take over the power of the state should also be stopped. We live in a world created and ordered by God and Jesus Christ. And we thank God for that and for the various orders that provide for us in various ways. And even though we're sometimes critical of it, we thank God for the state and the good that it does. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. We're going to sing hymn 625, How Great Thou Art. In humble adoration, 
right, I guess this morning, whoops, I guess this morning it's the Amy Show. We're both in our green. Anyway, um, I'm really delighted to be up here this morning um, to celebrate all the women in this church. For any woman that may be new to FPC Newton, and as a reminder to those already here, we have three active Presbyterian women's circles that meet for fellowship and Bible study. We have two book clubs. We have Creative Hands, the Well Isn't That Special Ladies Lunch Group, Celebration of Life Helpers, and various other opportunities to gather. As I have said in the past, but I believe it bears repeating, we are very busy and add much to the life of this church. Now, if you would join me for the litany of gratitude and celebration. For the gifts of women throughout the ages, we, we give, give thanks. thanks. For the ways that they have shown up, from Shifra to Pua to Miriam and Hagar, from Deborah and Jael to Ruth and Rahab to Vashti and Esther, we, we celebrate you. you. For their courage and strength, resistance and rest, wisdom and subversiveness, we, we celebrate you. you. For Malon, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tira, we recognize your groundbreaking advocacy. We, we give, give thanks you. for you. For Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Elizabeth, her cousin, we see your brave faith. We, we honor, honor you. you. For Jephthah's daughter and Benjamite's concubine, for Leah and Pania and all the women who have been reduced to their reproductive abilities, we give thanks and honor, for you are so much more than that. For Mary Magdalene, Martha, Mary, Joanna, Susanna, Rhoda, Dorcas, Tabitha, and the countless unnamed women of the sacred texts, we center you from the margins and celebrate you. For mothers, aunts, wives, daughters, sisters, for all the women, in every walk of life throughout all space and time. We, we give, give thanks, thanks, we celebrate you, we honor you. you. Alleluia. Amen. Now, as is tradition, it is my pleasure to bestow Presbyterian Women's Honorary Life Membership on two very deserving women. Both have deep roots here at FPC Newton. The first has been a member of FPC Newton since 1982 and a circle member for about as many years. As an active member of circle number five, she is known to always jump in and help with whatever needs to be done. Her friendly and compassionate nature, she has rarely met a stranger, has led her to be a faithful member of the care team and the daytime book club while another passion of hers has been getting adults together for a meal. What began as dinners for eight are now adult fellowship dinners, and she is the life force behind these. Using her outstanding organizing and hostessing abilities, she makes these events much anticipated by many members and guests of this church. Please help me congratulate our first recipient, Barb Forshee. <laughs> we want to see you in your pretty green. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Anyway, we have a little something for you there. Congratulations, Barb. Well deserved. <laughs> Our second recipient is an active member of circle number two, now known as the Lydia Circle. She has been a member of FPC Newton since about 1992, having been drawn to our congregation for many reasons, but one of the most important to she and her husband a retired minister, was our strong mission commitment. Retirement certainly didn't slow them down, as they made church mission trips, 
ETRICM, Habitat for Humanity, 10,000 Villages, and Visiting Shut-Ins top priorities. Young in spirit, with a heart for giving, this woman is a regular worship attendee, occasional choir member, beloved member of the Fellowship Sunday School class, member of the Abernathy Laurels Handbell Choir, and still volunteers weekly at ETRICM, or as it's known now, Ashore, our secondary on our second, excuse me, honorary lifetime member is Irma Yowzi. Congratulations. <laughs> And just as a reminder, I know it's been said several times, but please do join us for punch and cake after the service, and we'll t get to talk to these two lovely ladies. Thank you. <laughs> he's already read it, so he's, <laughs> he knows how to say it, but I'll, we'll try. Join me in the affirmation of faith. We confess the following evangelical truths. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Scripture tells us that in as yet unredeemed world in which the church also exists, the state has by divine appointment the task of providing for justice and peace. It fulfills this task by means of the threat and exercise of force, according to the measure of human judgment and human ability. The Church acknowledges the benefit of this divine appointment in gratitude and reverence before Him. It calls to mind the Kingdom of God, God's commandment and righteousness, and thereby the responsibility both of the rulers and of the ruled. It trusts and obeys the power of the word by which God upholds all things. We reject the false doctrine as though the state, over and beyond its special commission, should and could become the single and totalitarian order of human life, thus fulfilling the church's vocation as well. We reject the false doctrine as though the church over and beyond its special commission, should and could appropriate the characteristics, the tasks, and the dignity of the state, thus itself becoming an organ of the state. You may be seated. Well, it is St. Patrick's Day. And so, though few of you are actually Irish, you might be, I thought I would pray today the prayer of St. Patrick, sometimes known as St. Patrick's Breastplate, and sometimes you've heard pieces of it in prayers and anthems. We're going to read the whole thing. Let us pray. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in the threeness, through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation. I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth with his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion with his burial, through the strength of his resurrection with his ascension, through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom, I arise today through the strength of the love of cherubim in the obedience of angels, in the service of archangels, in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward, in the prayers of patriarchs, in the predictions of prophets, in the preaching of apostles, 
in the faith of confessors, in the innocence of holy virgins, in the deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depth of the sea, the stability of the earth, the firmness of rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from snares of devils, from temptations of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill afar and near. I summon today all these powers between me and those evils against every cruel, merciless power that may oppose my body and soul, against the incantations of false prophets, the black laws of pagandom, the false laws of heretics, the craft of idolatry, against spells of witches and smiths and wizards, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul, Christ, to shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through belief in threeness, through confession of the oneness, of the creator of creation. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let us worship God with our tithes and offerings. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. 
Let us pray together. Most giving and forgiving God, you provide for our every need. You open our lips to offer you praise. You strengthen our hands to respond to Christ's call. With hearts, hands, and voices renewed by your spirit, we place now before you our commitment to serve. Use us in ways that will benefit others and accept what we offer as a sign of our faith. Amen. We, uh, we dedicate this last hymn to Clayton Todd.
will follow. And then go from there and go out in peace. May all the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you and stay with you today and every day forever. Amen. Are you one? Are you one? In the blood, in the blood, in the soul. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?